In most Western cultures, we've become quite accustomed to speaking over top of one another and rarely actually slowing things down enough to listen to one another and to truly hear what's important to another person. So a different model is to do what we refer to as reflective listening. And it's almost always a facilitated session, but I don't need to be the facilitator. Any one of you can use this technique. And in fact, that's why we're sharing this oversight. That's uh, why we're sharing this insight into how to use this tool. So the first thing that a facilitator would do would be to summarize a challenge. And so in a school planning setting, that's often something like this. We have 700 learners. They eat lunch between 11.15 in the morning and 12.45 in the afternoon. Our lunchroom is also our gym. And our meals are produced in a central kitchen and warmed up on site. So they're just presenting kind of the challenges that um, you're faced with. And then the next step is to ask the group, what should we recommend to some other decision-making group, often a board of trustees, governing board, that type of thing. And it can be asked also in the form of a question. For example, it might be, how might the dining experience become a positive contribution to learning? And you start with that, and then the group as a whole leaves at least 30 seconds before the next person speaks. Ideally, it'd be even more than that, but people get really uncomfortable after even only 30, 30 seconds. And you don't need to speak unless you have something new to offer and or a new insight that would be helpful for the group to hear. And periodically, the facilitator would summarize what has been said, in the, but always in the form of a question. Am I hearing that? and then elaborate on what they heard. Um, and then you repeat this process at least three times. So the, you let the group sift through what's important. The facilitator asks that question, am I hearing? And um, oftentimes they're not hearing what the group is saying, or you've got most of it right, but not yet everything. And that's why it's important to do this several times through, maybe even more than three times. Uh, and then, I think the other key pieces of this are to leave space for both agreement and disagreement. That if we all converge on an answer too quickly, we're not really slowing things down enough for that person who is maybe a little more introverted or disagrees and doesn't want to kind of rock the boat. So slow things down enough that they feel comfortable sharing their concerns. Um, and always ask for clarity don't tell people what to think, but ask um, if there are issues of, of clarity that are needed. Um, I'd love to see you try this for the, the next three meetings, and this could be a group of educators having a daily meeting, slow things down enough in that setting. It could be a large public meeting that you do this in. It could be um, in, in many other settings uh, with young learners or even at home. So. Um, Please share what you've learned, and um, I'll be very curious to see how your decision-making shifts when you create this kind of time for reflective listening.